Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today, Skylum Software updated Luminar Neo to what they're calling Update 2. It's version 1.2.0. This update includes a new feature called Dodge and Burn, and it also includes the ability to add an HDR merge extension. Now, the update is free, but if you want the HDR merge extension, you may have to pay for it. If you own Aurora HDR 2019, the HDR merge extension will be free. Now, if you own an earlier version of Aurora HDR, I'm not sure if it will be free for you. In the description below this video, I will have a link to Skylum's website, and you could check there to see if you will be getting the HDR merge extension for free or whether you have to pay for it. If you have to pay for it, it is $49.99. Now in today's video, I'm going to demo the HDR merge extension and I'm going to be demoing Dodge and Burn. Now as you can see, I have Luminar Neo updated. And once you update your Luminar Neo to update to version 1.2.0, you'll see that it looks a little bit different. Uh, when we're in the catalog panel, you'll see that like on the far right, I have this image selected you'll see that there's some exposure information uh, for this image. And if I click through the images, you can see that that exposure info is there. Below that, we have the HDR merge extension. Now, once you do update your Luminar Neo to update to, uh, to get the HDR merge extension installed, what you need to do is go over here on the left. You see this little puzzle piece? Click on that, and when you do, you'll get this to pop up and you can see I already have the HDR merge extension installed. In your case, it won't be installed, but you'll be prompted here to add a license key and then Luminar Neo will automatically install that HDR merge extension. Now again, I'm not sure if you'd be getting it for free as a previous owner of Aurora HDR or if you'll have to pay for it. Either way, you'll eventually get a license key and you could add that license key here and when you do uh, Luminar will automatically install the HDR merge extension and it will show up right here and you can see that you're being prompted to add one to ten photos to start and I do have these three images here this one on the far right is the one that um, that my camera deemed to be properly exposed. And you can see that it has good exposure into the shadows, but the highlights are starting to get blown out. Uh, the sculptures on the walls are blown out and the windows are blown out. So I took another image that was one stop below or underexposed compared to that image. And you can see that this one, we now have the sculptures on the walls properly exposed but the windows are still blown out and finally I took another image which is two stops underexposed from that first image and you could see that now the windows are starting to be properly exposed so what we're going to do is we're going to use three these three images as the bracket and merge them and see hopefully that I have a good exposure from the shadows all the way through to the highlights now to get them over here, it's prompting me to drag them into this little box. So we'll select them all, click on that first one, hold the shift key down, click on that last one, and just click and drag them right over there. Now when you do, you'll see that they appear here. It's kind of small, but they're there, and you can see that there's EV 0.0, .0 this is the properly exposed one, EV minus 1.0, that's one stop under, and EV two, minus 2.0 is two stops under. Now, before you just click Merge, click this little gear icon right here, and you have some options. Now, I did not use a tripod when I took these three images. I just handheld it, so I want to auto-align the images. When you do auto-align, it will take a little longer to merge. Ghost reduction, if you have something moving in the scene, if it's a, an HDR merge of images that were taken outside, let's say, and it's a bit windy, the trees are moving a little bit. You may want to click this. Also, if you have people moving through the scene, you may want to click it. In this case, there were some people uh, sitting up in the front pews. I'm not sure if they were moving much. Either way, I'm going to click this, and I have the option to 
change the amount of the um, ghost reduction. I'm going to just do low. And then which is the reference image? I make the reference image, I guess, that one that was what my camera deemed to be properly exposed. You also have the option here then to remove all the images if you want to start over. But I like this. We'll go with these settings and we'll just click merge. Now it will take a little time because I do have that ghost reduction clicked on and I do have auto alignment clicked on. Auto alignment does take a little bit um, compared to when you don't have it uh, clicked on. But once the HDR merge extension merges these three images, you'll see over here on the left hand side, we'll get a new folder. All the, um, the resultant image will be put in this new HDR merge folder right here. And we'll click on it and open it up. And you can see this is our merged image. And you can see that it looks much better. Uh, you can see that everything is properly exposed. I have good dynamic range uh, in the image. Looks pretty good. Now I could edit it from this point forward. I could just go over to the edit panel and start to edit it. Now, one thing I want to note that this is a TIFF file. So when Skylum's uh, Neo does the merge, it creates a TIFF file, and the TIFF file can be rather large. So be aware of that. And I'm not going to go, go through and process uh, the entire thing. I just want to give you an idea of what you can do with HDR merge. So you could go through, and I'm, as I mentioned, I'm not going to process the entire image. But um, I think it's very effective. If you already own Aurora HDR, you know that Skylum Software does a really nice job with HDR uh, photography. As a matter of fact, I think that's where they started. I think before they ever had uh, Luminar, they had Aurora. Aurora was the first app they created, and they actually know what they're doing when it comes to HDR merge. Now, let's talk about this other new feature in Luminar Neo Dodge and Burn. Let's get this image and go over to Edit. And if you go over on the tools on the right-hand side, you'll see towards the bottom, at the very bottom actually, under the Professional category is Dodge and Burn. Let's open this up. Now this is just a way you could affect the tone in the image. You could make some parts of it brighter and some parts of it darker. Uh, you could it has a lot of different applications in all types of photography. I'm showing you a portrait. I'm going to work on a portrait, but you obviously could do this with landscape images, really any type of image. Now, there's a couple different ways you could go about doing this. You could, let's say I'm going to lighten. This would be dodging dodging the image. You could click on the lighten button. You could get the proper size brush that you want to use. You could then uh, affect the softness of that brush. And then you could affect the strength. A lot of people, when we dodge and burn, um, we obviously will take strength relatively low. And when we have strength relatively low, we could do, let's say, let's a, te a test thing. And what it is, it's kind of cumulative. The more I brush, the more it will add the brush effect, in this case, lightening where I'm brushing. That's really the more conventional way to do it. And I'm going to undo that. I did two brush strokes. I'm going to hit Command Z twice. I also, if that didn't seem to work, I could go up to Edits and this Dodge and Burn, just reset it and then delete it. So I could get rid of that. Now we'll go back to Dodge and Burn over here. Okay, now the other way that you could do it, um, and this might be better for those of us that might not be as experienced at doing dodging and burning, is you could keep the strength all the way up, still get the correct size brush and softness of brush. And what you're going to do then is when you're done is affect the dodging and burning with this master amount slider. So what then I could do is I could come in here with this. Now you can see how it's really affecting the image, then I could maybe just do dodging on one instance of the dodge and burn tool. Uh, so like the lighten part, I'll do by itself. Then I'll go to uh, the amount slider and pull it down. 
till it looks good. I could turn it off and on with the eyeball. There's before and there's after. Now I'm happy with that. I could close it, then open another instance of it. And for this one, we're going to darken or burn parts of the image. Again, I'll keep that strength at 100, and I'll have softness at 100 and the size. That looks pretty good. And what we'll do is here, we'll come in here and you can see how this is affecting the image like that. But then we'll go to the master amount slider and we could pull that down considerably. And there's the before after on that. Maybe pull it down even a little more. So that's another way. And I'd say if you were a beginner and you're not used to using dodge and burn, to use this second method, it may be a little easier, although admittedly a bit unconventional. Uh, so I'm going to delete these again and show you just maybe the normal way that we, most of us might do it. I have a little bug here. There we go. We'll delete that. All right. Now we'll go back to dodge and burn. Now here's the more conventional way to use dodge and burn. What you would do is you would have the master mount slider at 100, but you would pull strength. Let's say I'm going to lighten it first. You pull strength down very low, like around 10 to 15. I have it at 12. Then you could come in and you could brush on parts of the image and kind of cumulatively add to it with each brush stroke. Like that. And then we could go to darken and that's burn, technically. Bring that strength down to something like 10 or 12. Again, excuse me. And then we'll maybe get a little bigger of a brush. You also could change the size of the brush with the bracket keys. The right bracket key makes it larger, left bracket smaller and you could come in here and add add some burning to the image like that um so that's dodge and burn I, I also while I have you here let me show you a little trick we'll reset this let's go back to dodge and burn all right this is if you ever want to slim someone's nose uh, this technique is more commonly done with makeup but you actually could do it with dodging and burning as well in post-production. Let's turn strength all the way up and we're gonna lighten first. What we're gonna do is we're gonna get a brush that is pretty small, like about this size. And then we're going to put a brush stroke right across the bridge of her nose, down here to the tip of her nose. All right, now we're going to darken it and we're gonna have strength at 100 again. And we'll get a little bit of a smaller brush. And we're gonna put another line right here. Now I know it looks ridiculous. And another line right there. Then what we're going to do is go back to lighten again. And we'll get a little bit of a smaller brush maybe. Nope. Like that. And we'll come in here like this and like this. Now it looks totally ridiculous, right? What we'll do now is take them out down, 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 down to like 10. Now look at the difference. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. That's a little post-production technique that I learned when I first started doing post-production. Uh, actually, I took a course on, in Photoshop probably 10 years ago and um, I learned that little technique on how to slim someone's nose. Now it's more commonly done with makeup those who are expert at applying makeup can do this, you know, with makeup, but maybe you want to just learn how to do it in post-production and that's how you do it in post-production. So that's it. That's the update to Luminar Neo update number two, version 1.2.0, the HDR extension and dodge and burn. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>